Nearly two months since the East Palestine derailment, the head of the NTSB is making her very first visit to the region. She's also sharing some new details on the investigation, including that overheated wheel bearing. From the night it happened, Lauren Linder has been covering the derailment and its aftermath. She's here now with more from the head of the NTSB. Lauren. Ken NTSB Chair Jennifer Homendy calls it a low-key visit, one she would have made sooner if it weren't for a foot injury. At the end of her trip, she sat down with me. Well, it is great to meet with you in person, finally. A meeting nearly two months in the making for East Palestine Mayor Trent Conaway and head of the NTSB Jennifer Homendy. But if there's anything you need, just okay. let us know. Happy to help. Okay, we appreciate it. Homendy witnessing the aftermath of the toxic train derailment for the first time in person Tuesday and Wednesday, meeting lawmakers, local officials, railroad workers, and first responders in both East Palestine and Darlington Township. How does it truly feel just to be here in this village, to actually step foot here? What has this been like? You know, I see a lot of families, a lot of hardworking people, and a lot of a town built up around railroad tracks uh, or vice versa, and I think this could happen anywhere. The agency believes the derailment occurred due to an overheated wheel bearing on car 23. For the first time, Homendy is revealing that hopper car is owned by the rail car leasing company GATX and that the bearing was refurbished in 2011. Because we know it was remanufactured, we're going to look at that process in depth to figure out, okay, what did occur here? The NTSB chair says Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw is cooperating. This Though is last really week at a Senate Commerce Committee hearing, she shared one piece of information was lacking. The locomotive was equipped with an inward facing camera. However, since the locomotive was put immediately back into service following the accident, the data was overridden. 15 minutes before the derailment and five minutes after, 20 total minutes of video is all they received from Norfolk Southern. When our team finally uh, looked at the recording in our lab, they realized, where's the rest of it? And so they contact Norfolk Southern and they don't have it. Hamdi says Norfolk Southern's camera was capable of recording 12 hours at a time. So 11 hours, 40 minutes are missing. Freight railroads aren't even required to have cameras like those on passenger and community railways, which Homendy wants to change. That's something we're recommending and have kept recommending for years. Homendy anticipates filing a safety recommendation on this matter for the Federal Railroad Administration to mandate 12 hour cameras and in turn require railroads to provide video to the NTSB when involved in investigations. Once it becomes enforceable and part of the regulations, they have to deliver that full 12, 12 hours or there's a violation of the regulation. Now the NTSB will be having a special investigative field hearing in June. Hamdi plans to hold town halls prior. For now reporting live in the studio, Lauren Linder, KDK TV News. Ken, back to you.